So now that we have a proper bar chart, what we can do is start labeling the bars. And to label the bars, we're going to just going to label them with the text containing the value that they represent. So this one would be labeled 12, this one 31, etc. Now to draw text onto an SVG canvas, we can use a text element that SVG provides. And how we would do this is if I wanted to put some text onto this canvas here, I would give a text element tag like this and write my text inside it and then I would close it off and what it's done is it's created a text element with hello world. Now the reason we can't see it is because in SVG the elements are always rendered at 0, 0 or the origin so we just need to push it below the rectangle so that we can see it. So the rectangle's height is 100 so I'm just going to push it down by 120 and now we can see the text element with the text hello world. So what we need to do is for each of these values in the array we need to create a text element with the text containing the value from the array and we need to place them above each of these bars. So the first thing to do would be to associate each of these with a text element within the SVG canvas and they've already done that here so they've selected all the text elements in the SVG canvas, they've associated with this data set here and they've called the enter method so that we can specify what to do for each of these items that don't have a text element. And we what we want to do is we want to first append it to create a new text element for each of these items. And then what we need to do is we need to set the contents of it, so the actual text, so the part within this tag here to the actual value from the array. And we can use the D3 text method for this. Now we don't have to provide a string here and instead we can provide a function telling it what to do with each item in the array. So each of these items represents the elements in this array, so 12, 31, 22, etc. And what we wanted to do is we just simply wanted to contain the text of the number itself. So we'll just return item. Now it's actually created a bunch of text elements here but it's all placed at 0, 0 and they're kind of to on top of each other so we can't really see them. So we need to bring them down and to bring them down we need to set the Y coordinate and to do that we'll call the attribute method and the attribute we want to set is the Y attribute and we can do that by saying Y and here we want to give it a function that takes in this time the item and the index. So it'll take so the second argument will just be the index so 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And it wants us to put it three units higher than the bar. So if we look at the height of the bar, that's calculated by doing h minus three times and then the data or the item in this case. So if we want to push it three above that, we need to take away three because pushing downwards is positive y, so pushing upwards is negative y. So what we can do is we can just copy this right here. And instead of D, we have item. And what we want to do is we want to take that and we want to push it up by 3, so we take away another 3. Now find, oh sorry, I forgot to return this. So now we have a bunch of numbers here. So now we need to, what we need to do is we need to start spreading these out so that they go over the bars they represent. And to do this, we just set the x coordinate. And again, we can call the attribute method here and use a function that takes in the item index. And the x-coordinate of each of these labels is going to be exactly the same as the x-coordinate over the bar because they're directly over the bar. So we can just look at what they've done here and it's, they've just done the index times 30. And now we've managed to get all the numbers to go above the bars. And that's all we need to complete this challenge. So I'm going to submit that now.
and yeah that works perfectly